Howdy y'all, welcome back to Ireland Bound. And uh, as I told you, I think I have found a solution to the problem with Alexander Rogers. Uh, it is, it still works. <laughs> In fact, I think it might work really good. Uh, I'm not going to stay on here too long because uh, I've got a lot of path running. Cat, would you leave my tripod alone? Go away. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Sorry, he thought that the uh, tripod was something for him to play with. Uh, but anyways, as I said, there are some good paths that I want to follow on this. And, um, well, let's just say that I feel like I might have found my answer. <laughs> so let's get into uh, the video, shall we? So we're going to jump right in here. And I'm going to show you what I've been doing. If I can get it to pop up. There we go. Of course, you remember that we were having trouble. I was having trouble trying to figure out exactly Alexander's, you know, birthplace. Well, there's a nice lady that she helped me off of one of the uh, online sites. And she suggested that I go through Rebecca. Sorry, my uh, tablet's going to be beeping here for a few moments. It's uh, catching up on everything. Uh, anyways, as she suggested that I go through Rebecca. So I pulled up Rebecca stuff and I confirmed her because all the information I had, I knew she had born, been born in Ohio. So I knew that for certain. Uh, so I confirmed everything for her. And of course it pulls up all the census stuff, everything that involves her. Um, there's one that I already accepted and it was, even though this says Rebecca Irving, it's supposed to be Rebecca Ewing because that's what it actually says in the book. Someone typed it in wrong. But, uh, this right here was the, uh, the marriage report that I got for Tafina where it mentioned her parents and that's where I got the name for Alexander Rogers. So I knew that for certain. Oops. Sorry. Uh, so we come down here. See, we got an 1880 United States federal census. And we got an 1870 United States federal census. Um, I'm going to go with the 1871 since that is the earliest one. And, of course, get in here into the information and come down here. I discovered this. I wanted to pop on this because I discovered this accidentally. When you hit a certain person, it pulls you up all the details of all the stuff that I was reading over. Surname Rebecca, uh, which or surname Rogers, excuse me, uh, which of course is her married name. Uh, given name Rebecca, that's her first name. So Rebecca Rogers. Um, how old she was at the time of the census, which was about 30, female, white, occupation, keeping house. Uh, so it tells that. Now, the only thing I'm having problem with is that it keeps saying she was born in Kentucky. But the, um, the thing is, is that the family names, like the kids and stuff, add up like they're supposed to. But see, so you come down through here, it's got all these things here. And this is, this side here is all the stuff that basically, uh, if you go to the top and look at everything, it just gives it right here. Now I'm going to go up one more to Alexander Rogers. Shows him being 36, a male, white. Now look at this here. Occupation, wagon maker. <laughs> He's a wagon maker. Okay, do you, this is right here, finding this information, this is like finding a Cadillac in the middle of a bunch of Toyotas, okay, I mean, th this is actually something that it, it's big, 
you know, whether or not some of you are going to realize this, this is a big thing. Being a wagon maker is so much different than being a farmer. Because this, this is like a true occupation. It's not going out. I mean, back then, everybody, you know, had large pieces of land. Or a lot of people, they had large pieces of land. You know, all this other stuff. You know, they, they could go out. They could farm it. They could ranch it. There was a lot of people that were in the agricultural field. Because that's what they needed the most of. That's what so many people did. You know, you had one guy over here that he would grow wheat and corn, and another guy over here that would grow tomatoes and beans. You know, and everybody, you know, you take your extra wheat and corn and go to town, and with the money you got off of it, you buy the wheat and the beans that the other guy made. So, I mean, like I said, a lot of people did agricultural, but Alexander was a wagon maker. You know how much easier that is to track? I mean, that is, it's like the difference of night and day, okay? I mean, you, you can track a wagon maker easier because, you know, he's he's got a profession. There's not going to be another wagon maker in this town unless it's like a really, 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 really big town. You know, if you had a place like St. Louis, you might have two or three wagon makers but that's all you would have is two or three wagon makers. You know, uh, the wagon makers, not only would they make them, but they also repaired them. I mean, they, these were people that they were important key members of society. You know, these are people that it's like nothing would run without them. I mean, I'm, I use the term Cadillac because basically the wagons were what they had before they had things like Cadillacs and Toyotas and Fords and Chevys and Dodges and Nissans and all the things that we have nowadays. You know, this, this was basically, he was a car maker back then. Of course, like I said, here it gives his birthplace, Kentucky, but that might not be right. Middle citizen over 21. Yep. He sure is. So uh, I just I found that out accidentally while I was looking through some of the records, and I wanted to share that with y'all. Whoops, didn't intend to do that. I was wanting to come up here and show where they were living at this time. This is uh, 1870 census, I believe. Um, it says inhabitants of Washington Township in the county of Mercer in the state of Missouri so he is a wagon maker in Missouri okay so now I have got so much more I can go by okay I mean this is this is like epic here because now I can get a hold of someone in Mercer Missouri um, or excuse me in Washington Township Missouri in the county of Mercer and get a hold of them and say, hey, can you help me? I'm looking for information on a wagon maker who lived in your town at the time of the 1870 census. Now, remember what I said, you know, you might have a lot of farmers, but, you know, depending on how big Washington Township was, you know, it might have been pretty small. You know, he might have been the only wagon maker. You know, so, I mean, there there could be information on him. You know, some uh, someone might have written a, a history book on the early day merchants of Washington Township. You know, so, like I said, that this is big because a merchant, like someone who, uh, you know, would be the town casket maker, uh, someone who would build wagons, someone who owned the general store, someone who owned, you know, the hotel in town, they would be more likely to be mentioned, you know, than just another farmer. Oh, yeah, there's farmers all over. There's a big plot of land over here, and they, they grow uh, potatoes, and this guy over here, he grows uh, wheat, and this guy over here, he grows you know, fill in whatever fruit and vegetable you want to add in. You know, this guy over here, he's got him a big orchard. He grows uh, on one side of it apples, and the other side of it, he grows peaches. 
you know, so, I mean, you know, like I said, back then, you know, farmers were like a dime a dozen. They were all over the place because you needed a lot of farmers to grow lots of stuff so they could trade it. You know, one family wouldn't grow everything they'd need because they rely, rely on everybody else. This person would share with this person, this person would share with this person. So, I mean, this, this is big. This is really big for for looking here. And I just go through and look. Now, I know that looks like it says he's 86, but this person, for some reason, they draw their threes to where they look almost like eights. So, uh, he's 36 years old. His wife is 30. Now, the t uh, they gave the, uh, the children an order of birth. Um, Mary, that's supposed to be Mary, but for some reason they spelled it M-E-A-R-Y, which is not correct. Mary is six years old. She, she's the oldest, followed by William, Alice, and then Andrew. Now, Andrew is the name of Rebecca's father. Okay, so um, we, we have that. And on another one, another census I was looking at, I saw that um, Rebecca's, um, Rebecca's father's, it was either his mother or his grandmother. Uh, the age is big enough. It could have been a grandmother, but of course she might have had him late in life. So it might be his mother. I don't know until I can get a little bit deeper into that one. Her name was Mary. So, I mean, like I said, got two names here, a Mary and an Andrew who both fit in with family names that I have seen. So, I mean, this one, this one feels good. You know, this one feels really, really good here. So, uh, even though they've got Rebecca's place of birth as Kentucky. It, uh, some of my misunderstood and thought that's where she had been living before. It might have been where they met at. But uh, anyway, so that's that kind of, of settles that. But of course, like I said, it shows them all here, Kentucky. But that might have been where they had been living at. Uh, they might have all been living in Kentucky. Um, like I said, I won't know until I have a chance to look into some of the other records so uh and just to confirm that that was the 1870 come back up here to the 1880 census just give it a moment here we go now whoops that's samuel trying to ah it's not wanting to to do Okay, uh, now here, here's another one. Uh, it says Maggie Rogers, but as I have discovered, uh, Maggie is actually Margaret. It was Rebecca Margaret Ewing Rogers. Of course, she married Grandpa. Uh, here we go. Got it up here. Uh, Alexander Rogers, white, male, uh, 48, which is, of course, close enough. Uh, sometimes they didn't write names down as they should have. And of course he might've had a birthday, uh, between, you know, when, uh, the time they took it, this time of the time they took it, well, of course he had like at least 10 birthdays, but I mean, uh, depending on when his birthday was, uh, self married once again, wagon maker. Now this is something that I thought was kind of interesting, uh, some of these they now have at the time was a person sick, blind, deaf, and dumb, idiotic, insane, uh, maimed, crippled, or bedridden. Uh, you know, that I, I thought that was interesting. Um, now, th this was something that it kind of, this kind of threw me a little bit, but the fact that some of the kids are the same, and I'll show you in a moment here. Um of course, it still shows him Kentucky, and it shows both of his parents Kentucky. Like I said, that kind of threw me because, um, you know, in the other one, it didn't have them listed at all where they would have been born, and now this one's Kentucky. But I'm going to show you something else here in just a moment. But before I do that, uh, there we go. Still got to blow it up a little bit more. Now, 
course, uh, the highlighted stuff is the family. Um, Maggie and Alexander, which, of course, like I said, it was uh, Rebecca Margaret Ewing, and she became Rebecca Margaret Rogers. Um, now, you notice here, Samuel's listed as the oldest one. Uh, William, uh, Alice, Andrew, Robert, and Alexander. Now, there are two names that are missing from here. You remember Mary was on the other one? Also, too, at this point, my great-great-grandmother, Tafina, would have been born. But on one of the other ones for her, her and Mary were listed as living with uh, Rebecca or Maggie living with her parents. Okay, so uh, instead of her being, instead of the two of them being with mom and dad, the two of them are living with her grandparents. Um, I don't know exactly why. I don't know what was going on. You know, I can't answer that. But the, like I said, there were three that were born since the last census. Uh, Robert, who was eight. Uh, there was my grandmother, Tafina, who at the time is five or six. I think she was six. And then Alexander, who is three. Okay, so uh, there was three born since the last one. So that makes one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight children that uh, Rebecca and Alexander have had together. So... Uh, <laughs> Yeah, you know, there there's uh there's quite a few more kids uh now than what there was before and like I said two of them are living with her parents and that's why they're not on this one but they are in the 1880 census listed with her parents so we have kept up with where they are at um still listed as a wagon maker um and of course, like I said, for some reason, it listed, you know, all of his family and all of her family is either Kentucky or Ohio. Uh, actually, something that I didn't mention in the other one that I found was kind of interesting is that um, had one son born in Nevada, one in Missouri, had daughter born in Iowa, then go back to Missouri again, then Iowa again, then Missouri again. And, of course, uh, um Tafina was born in Iowa, and I can't remember where Mary was born at, but, uh, you know, got them all listed there. Now, come up here. Are they still in the same place? No, they're not. If you have noticed here, inhabitants of Burlington Junction. So they're now in a new town in the county of Nottoway in the state of Missouri. So they basically, they've moved a few towns over. They're no longer in the same town. So, um, you know, we, we've got two different towns now to confirm where Alexander, you know, might have been born at. You know, uh, back then they might have gotten more information than what the, the uh, census has shown. So we've now got Burlington Junction in one county, and then we've got um, Washington Township in another country, uh, county. But both of them are in Missouri. Now, what I love is that they seem to like these places with long names here. Washington Junction, or Washington uh, um, Township, and then Burlington Junction. <laughs> uh, I swear, you gotta love family and the things that they, they do. So anyway, so that you know, wagon maker, two different cities. That's a pretty, pretty big thing. Um, come on. There we go. Just trying to get it to pull out. Now, one other thing. And that, like I said, this was the one that really got me excited. Come down here just a little bit further. Uh, that's, where was it? Okay, that wasn't it. Did I pass it? I probably passed it, didn't I? Uh, 1860, 
1910. Maybe it's 1910. It might have not been as late as I thought it was. 1870. Okay, I guess it was the 1910 one. I could have, honestly, I could have sworn that there was one in here for 1930. But I'll go with this one because uh, hopefully this is the one. Uh, <laughs> shows you how short and faulty my memory can be. Okay, so this one we're actually going to have to do a little bit of looking to find them. If I remember right, I think I think they were close to the bottom. Oh my. Ah, here they are. Uh, Alexander and Margaret. <laughs> uh, they chose different names to go by at this time. Alexander and Margaret Rogers. Here they are. The, pretty old at this point. Uh, 78 and 67. Now, okay, this is the one. Now, see, right... Actually, what I'm going to do is I'm going to move it up here to make it Alexander and Margaret. Give y'all a better idea of what I'm looking at here at the very top. Okay, him from Kentucky, her from Ohio. But look what it says for both of his parents. Ireland. And then not only Ireland, but right above it, it says English. Ireland, English. Now, um, back at the time that they would have been, you know, born there, it all would have been just Ireland. Um, I'm going to have to do a little research into my history to remember a little bit better, but I don't think that Northern Ireland split off from English, you know, from the English controlled part of it until sometime in the 1900s. But the fact that he's putting that both of his parents are from Ireland and the English controlled part of Ireland. Now, Nowadays, anybody who knows their geography, where is the English-controlled part of Ireland? It's called Northern Ireland. Do you realize how much shorter we have just made this whole trip? Okay, we're not, we, we are now specified down to a certain area. The English-controlled part of Ireland. We have gone from the whole entire island to look at, of Ireland, to, uh, was it four counties, I think it is? So somewhere in those four counties would be where they're from. We have gone from basically the whole entire island to now, we've narrowed it down a lot it down there see it just a little bit better I mean English Ireland English Ireland I mean that's big that is really 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 big you know I mean not only do I have the wagon maker aspect of it to look at I now also have a more defined area in Ireland to look at Let's see, what was this over here? Oh, yeah. Um, jobs. Looks like he'd become a blacksmith. English. Yeah. Yeah, whether able to... Yeah, they speak English. Trade or profession of or particular uh, work held. Um, so, come back up here. Uh, <laughs> come back up. See, here here we are again. Uh back at them I can tell because of the English Ireland part of it come over here he's a blacksmith now he's in his 60s and he's a blacksmith so he's gone from wagon making to basically working with metal which of course you had to work with a certain amount of metal back then so I mean it's you know that's something else to, to definitely you know look at I haven't looked at everything to see what all this is about but uh wow <laughs> uh that like i said th that just it really excites me because 
now have two professions to look at. I have narrowed down where in Ireland it could be. So now I just got to see if I can find information for him on, you know, who his parents are. Alexander and Margaret Rogers. Oh, and where were they born? Uh, where are they living at, at this time? Uh, here, here we go again with these names. Let's see. They're in the state of Oklahoma. So uh, we are now living in Oklahoma at this point. Which, uh, if you'll remember right, uh, Tafina and her family, they were living in Oklahoma. In the county of Washington, which I believe that's where they were at. Township or other division. They were in the Bar Bartlesville Township. Okay, so uh, depending on how big it was at that time, you know, that might be a pretty easy one to look at also. Uh, so we've, see, name of incorporated place, Bartlesville City. I don't know, can't quite figure out that last word. Uh, someone's handwriting was a little bit too bad at that point. Uh, let's see. The enumerator was an Elizabeth McLillan. So, uh, let's see. This one was done in 1910. Looks like April, maybe. So, uh, <laughs> they did it in April. So, um, here, here we are in Oklahoma. So, like I said, considering that about that same time that, uh, Tafina was living there that means that she was living close to her parents probably in the county of washington because if i remember right i think the way it was set up it was county of washington also it's just the town i can't i can't remember about so uh we now have some more places to investigate two places in missouri and one place in oklahoma but uh that like i said that really kind of excited me and got me you know, really going about this. Now, the only thing I wish they had on this, and they don't, um, the, the top one here is just basically confirmation on, um, uh, Rebecca and, you know, when she was born. Census record, census record, census record, uh, Missouri death record, um, another census, census census but they don't have any marriage things in here so uh either they, they haven't ran across anything yet uh any records uh or they just haven't gotten it connected in you know their their automated system hasn't gotten it connected in yet so i now have some confirmation on rebecca and, uh, you know what, I wonder if I have, let's see, do I have her picture in here? If I do, I want to put her picture up. Yes, I do. This was Rebecca right here. I, this picture here gets me because the first time I looked at it, took me a moment to realize that uh it wasn't a man's picture i mean very stark face of course her hair was pulled back to where you know wasn't flowing around her face or anything you know there was one of tafina that I put up that she yeah, her hair is in what would be considered a loose bun now but let's see come on there we go sometimes these things don't want to work as easy as what they're supposed to. There we go. So there is Elizabeth's face. Actually, I'm going to pull this side in a little bit. There we go. Next. And let's see. Get her tagged. Rebecca, Maggie, or Margaret Ewing. Yes. 
you know, but longer I look at her, more I realize that that is the lady's face. It's just one who has seen a lot of things. You know, there's there's a lot of, of stuff that she has dealt with in her life, a lot of things that she has seen, and it shows in, in her face. Okay, so now that it got that done. You know, but like I said, once you really stop and look at her, you realize that she is a woman. She just, she's one that has seen so much and has lived through so many things. You know, it's a face that has probably seen more than it should. Truthfully, at times I, I'm looking at it and I see a little bit of myself. I almost see a little bit of my nose there and her nose and her mouth and my mouth. Now, the ears I'm not so certain about, but uh, yeah, so that's Rebecca Margaret Ewing Rogers. Get her saved in there. And yep, that looks like it's a good size. There we go. Rebecca Ewing. My third great-grandmother. So, uh, at some point, maybe we can get some more information. But, until then, you know, like I said, I've now got more to go on than what I had before. So, uh, that, there we go. Talk to y'all later. Okay, so what do y'all think? What's what's your opinion? What's your idea? I personally think it all works. You know, not because that's the end I want it to go to, but because of the fact that things add up. <laughs> it, it finally kind of comes together. There are still a few things I have questions about and that I am going to try and do some research on. Um there's a lady, uh, hold on a second, let me pull up my phone because I want to try and remember her name. Uh, I was on one of the um, Ancestry uh, things on Facebook. They have an Irish Ancestry group that you have to basically prove that you're trying to do research for them to uh, help you out. And of course, uh, whenever I asked the question that I asked about my, my great 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 grandfather uh i had several people chiming in with answers on that and so uh they were of help that was a couple of days ago just give me a moment <laughs> uh let's see i know i've got to be close because that was just a few days ago and by the way my few days ago could have been anywhere between yesterday and a month ago <laughs> but it wasn't quite that far back it was actually this last week uh, it's just that apparently this last week I have been very popular. I think, I think that's her right there. Hold on. Yep, that's her. Uh, there was a very nice lady on um, uh, Irish Genealogy. Well, hold on. Find the, the name of the group. Ireland Genealogy and Heritage. Uh they are the ones that I went to and that I was working through. Uh, like I said, I basically I was asking a question about Ireland. And so they, of course, invited me in. And I had several people that commented, but there's one lady named Sheila Khan who she really helped me a lot. She worked with me. She, uh, she actually talked with me and she gave me an idea. And the idea that she gave me, I worked my way through. And as I worked my way through it, uh, <laughs> it, it put, put it all into perspective. Uh, she basically was the one that suggested not concentrating so hard on uh, Alexander, since I didn't have all the information that I needed for him, and to look at Rebecca, who, of course, I knew from all the, the pages, because even though Alexander's uh, place of birth was changing with each 
you know, Jeannie, or each uh, census report, hers stayed the same. Ohio, 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 Ohio. And I found a Rebecca Ewing born in Ohio, and I followed it back. And, you know, like I said, it, it took me an unexpected route. But as you saw there, there was confirmation. I mean, he they put for his parents being born in Ireland, and then uh, right above that, just, you know, that little area right above that, it said English. Now, um, those of us nowadays, uh, we would know and realize, you know, that that's probably Northern Ireland, the part of it that is still controlled by the United Kingdom. But my um, ancestors, when they left Ireland back apparently a couple hundred years ago, it was still all just Ireland. You know, um, I'll have to do a little bit more research, but if I remember right, I think all of Ireland at that point was still under the control of England. And it wasn't, I want to say it was sometime in the early 1900s that they split off and you had the Republic of Ireland and then you had Northern Ireland. Uh, like I said, I'm unfortunately, I'm not that up on my history of it. So I'll have to look into that a little bit more. Uh, maybe that'll be another video for later. Uh, you know, how, how, how uh, did the Ireland split happen? Uh, so, I mean, that's something to, to look into. Um, but anyways, I'm kind of excited, you know, because now I have something that, you know, says Ireland. <laughs> you know, actually, it's a couple of somethings, you know. Um, like I said, I'll do a little bit more research with um, with Alexander and find out for certain whether he was born in Kentucky or if he was born in Ireland. Uh, and also find out if his parents were born in Ireland as well, because it showed both of them. So, I mean, that's, you know, I mean, one person is one thing, but when you have two of them that you're showing. <laughs> so uh, anyways, like I said, it's, it's a new path for, for the, for me to take a new thing for me to look at. And in all honesty, I'm, I'm really enjoying this. I'm, I'm, I'm having fun looking it up because I'm getting to talk to some interesting people like Miss Sheila Khan. Um, I'm thinking that since she was so helpful, I am going to try and make contact with her again and see if she can help me a little bit more. Uh, like I said, she got me, she got me this far. So uh, maybe she can help me a little bit more. Um, you know, there's some other pages that she recommended, but you have to at least buy a one day membership to look into them. So that might be something I'd have to put on the back burner for a little bit. But you know, like I said, it, it's it's kind of put me back on the Irish path again. So we're we're getting confirmation again of going back to Ireland, and of course the channel name is Ireland Bound. So, but anyways, uh, I don't have a whole lot else. It just I had to share that with y'all because honestly, it got me really really excited. So, anyways, uh, I will let y'all. Oh, before I forget, um, here in a couple of weeks. I am hoping to have some different and interesting videos for you. There is here in the area, it's called the North Texas Irish Festival. And it's supposed to be one of the largest in the world. And they're supposed to have all sorts of things, including a genealogy thing. So I'm, I'm going to be going and checking them out and talking to them. And uh, maybe with their help, you know, between Sheila and, and their help, maybe we can get a little bit more going. <laughs> maybe we can find out a little bit more. Uh, but anyway, so I'll, I'll uh, have stuff from that because there's going to be like concerts and dancing and, and food testing and things like that and storytelling. So I'm, I'm going to see what kind of mischief uh, I can get into with that. And until then, I hope everybody has a great week and I'll, uh, oh, I almost forgot one other thing. <laughs> I know I'm forgetful today, right? Subscribe. That little red button down there, that if you haven't hit it yet, you know, that says subscribe. Uh, it should 
uh, most of them now I think they should already have the, all the bell icons so that, that way you don't have to go in there and tell them oh yeah I definitely want to get more of her but go, uh, go in hit the hit the little subscribe button um, you know so that, that way you can stay up to date on me and find out more of what's going on with my grandfather <laughs> You know, I mean, if you if you want to follow this journey, come on. I'd, I'd love to have y'all along, and we'll find some other troubles to get into. Uh, also, too, I like that nice thumbs up. You know, it uh, lets me know that y'all are enjoying it. It also lets Facebook know that y'all are enjoying it also. And hopefully they will uh, put me in better positions to where people will actually see me. So, uh, you know, don't forget to give me a nice thumbs up. Leave a comment. You know, uh, let them know that, and let me know, like, if you have a question, uh, maybe you have some research of your own that you can help me with, you know, whatever. So, uh, leave a comment, and as always, you know, if, if you know someone who might be able to help me, or maybe something I'm doing can help someone else, they're doing genealogy research, please feel free to share. You know, I mean, that that's part of what I'm doing this for, you know so we can help each other you know someone might know something they can help me with or I might know something that I can help someone else with and if I can encourage someone who is wanting to get into genealogy because I've talked to people you know I, I, I tell people about my channel all the time and I'll start talking to them about you know about genealogy stuff and the, people want to be involved with they want to know and they want to see they want to know where their families are from they want to feel that connection back you know they, they want to know who their great-grandparents were and their great-great-grandparents and their great-great-great-great-great-grandparents you know some people they know that their family is from a certain place but exactly where <laughs> so um, you know like I said I always encourage them and also, too, I, I tell them, you know, if you've got family members, talk to them. Put them down on video. Record them talking about their family. You know, get it down so that that way, not only you have it, but your kids, your grandkids, your great-grandkids, your nieces, your nephews, your cousins, everyone has that record. You know, if nothing else, you know, they have that picture of, grandma whoever or grandpa whoever you know talking about the good old days growing up in this certain area um you know i mean i just honestly i love hearing other people's stories too so you know like i said talk people into letting you record you know help help future generations along because before long there's going to be people that they're not going to remember anything uh, so anyways, uh, I guess that's it, and I hope everyone has a great day, and I'll talk to you later. This time I really will be talking to you later. I'm not forgetting anything. Talk to you. Bye.